everybody, I'm Ashley Graham, and this is Pretty Big Deal, where confidence is key. Every episode, I get to pick the brains of brilliant, inspiring, honest, new and old friends who are a pretty big deal. Today, we are talking to trailblazing designer Christian Siriano. Christian has been a champion of size inclusivity in fashion long before it started making headlines. Since the beginning of his career, his work has touched all sizes and price ranges, a balance few designers have attempted. Christian Seriano's on Pretty Big Deal. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. So you just had New York Fashion Week. Yes. And it was wild. It, it was, was wild. Spring, summer 2020. 2020. Do you like that phrase? No. Spring, summer 2020. Well, I just Feels don't understand. Weird. I, did, I never, maybe you could like give me some insight. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years and you've been doing it for. This is like our 12th year. 12th year. Okay. Yeah. Why do we have to show so early and you can't even purchase what you're showing? It's very simple. It takes time to make clothes. Got it. You heard it here first. It's the production <laughs> time. That's what it originally was for. That okay. basically when a store would place an order, it takes, it can take two months just to get the fabrics from Italy because they're so slow. Right. So it's really the lead time to make clothes. Okay, so that's it. But now in our new world, <laughs> you can make things a little quicker. So I do think the schedule could change a little bit. But there are some designers that are doing like see it, you buy it. Yeah. But yeah. but there's very few. It's because it's so risky. You have to basically be like, everyone's gonna love this shift dress this season. Right. And if they don't, then you're screwed. Because you have to already have put the order in before you have to the put, show. Exactly. Ah. So you're basically which is kind of why when Tom Ford did it and like Takoon didn't really go well. Cause like you're literally gambling. You're saying like everyone's gonna love this look, but Everyone could hate that look. It could be your lowest set. Because I actually sometimes never really, I predict what people will like and what they will like respond to, but actually what they buy is very hard to predict. It can be the most random thing in the world. Huh. You know? So, well, I saw some gems in the show that I really want and yeah, need and have yeah. desired for a while. Whatever you want. Your front row was banging. Did you love my 90s? Tell everybody actresses. who was in your front also, row. Also, who knew that. I mean, I love that Megan Trainer has never been to a fashion show before. Ever. Ever. Which is so interesting. And she's amazing. And Jennifer Coolidge has never been to a fashion show in her entire career, which is one people missing out. Cause let me tell you, she she's is major. the so major. You know. She's like And I kept sitting on her. <laughs> she's like, I like this. And I'm like, she, she's like, I don't like that. I like this. I don't like that. Like, it's so, there's no no BS at all. Oh, my God. It's, that's the best. Wait, so tell everybody who yeah. your um, front row was. Who was? I mean, it was random. But it was like, I really wanted, like, when I grew up, I, wa you know, obviously, like, I'm a 90s kid. Like, that was my teenage life. So, like, I grew up watching Buffy my whole life. So I, and Sarah Michelle Gellar is a good friend of mine. And I was like, I had to invite her and Alicia Silverstone and Lucy Liu and Jennifer Coolidge. That's my like little like 90s dream world right there. And everybody, they all kind of knew each other too. No, they, cause they all have worked together on things. Like Sarah and Alicia were in Scooby Doo Rap. 2 together. <laughs> That's a <laughs> kicker. Also, <laughs> it's really weird people who have seen that movie. I judge them differently. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and um, for real, we were in, me and Alicia went on a vacation together. We were in Venice, like on a boat. And the guy driving the boat was like, I loved you so much in that movie. And Scooby-Doo Scooby -Doo. too. Two. <laughs> That's when you know it's major. Oh my God, That's I love it. Fabulous. Oh my God. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of growing up, you grew up in Annapolis, Maryland. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, small town vibes. Yeah, it's like, it is funny because it's small town and it's like very preppy and very buttoned up because right. the Naval Academy that is there. But it's in between Baltimore and DC, kind of. So you get somewhat of a metropolitan thing, kind of. Yeah, well, you left yeah. as soon as you could. <laughs> yeah. But was it your mom and your sister who kind of shaped your eye for designing for? Yeah. Literally everyone. Yeah, yeah. It really was. Like, I, you know, I was in this household. My sister was a ballet dancer and tiny, and I was always around those type of girls. Prima ballerinas. <laughs> and then my mom was, like, you know, curvy, but, like, loved clothes and shopped at all the stores that I have, like, done collaborations with. I like, know! Which is hilarious. And, which we um, will get into. Yeah, but I think it's funny that that's, like, how I learned about clothes, actually, was from her. 
And um, and now I like work with those brands. So that's just like a funny thing. But yeah. And so now she's like, excited because she gets free clothes. Free clothes. Yeah, from her and favorite And cruises brands. around the world. Love. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to go to Monte Carlo. I'm like, are you? She's like, you want to send me a little check? <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> it's so major. I really I love, love her. It. Yeah. I think I learned a lot from them. Um, and they're friends. Like, you know, I was always around all these women, my mom's friends and then my sister's friends. So two totally different worlds. But they all had like the same things oh, I don't look at in this, or this is about my body. So it kind of, I just like learned a lot, I think, just by observing, mm-hmm. not even talking about it, just observing. I love that. I want to start talking about uh, how you dress so many different bodies, but I want to get into yeah. that because I want to keep going in chronological order because yeah, tell me. after Annapolis, then it was Baltimore, but yep. then you went to London yeah. to college. Yeah, You had an internship with uh, Vivian Westwood and yeah. um, McQueen. McQueen. Mm-hmm. Can we talk about um, it? No, it's great. Did you work with them personally? <clears throat> well, it was um, interesting because like, I mean, obviously, like, I was the only American working Mm. at both places. Like, they didn't have American students. No, because that was, like, very weird. Um, But I went to, like, an American kind of college in London. So, anyway, but I fought and fought. I really wanted this internship at Westwood. And when I got it, um, it just was really inspiring because, you know, Vivian was there every single day and, like, actually worked on her collection. So Mm. I thought that that was really great to see. That's kind of how I got the job at McQueen. Oh. And McQueen was amazing because I kind of became one of the other assistant designers, kind of assistant in a way. Um, so I sat next to Sarah and this woman, Caroline. Um, and Sarah was there doing every single every single day. Lee wasn't there so much because I think it was kind of toward the end. a dark time. Yeah. Yeah. So sadly. But still like in the mix of such a creative world, which is kind of how I treat my office and my team now. Like, I try to treat it how I learned from them. What was the biggest lesson you think you learned from from being in London and being with McQueen and Vivian? I think it was like, you know, there was no risk not, like, there was nothing too big risk to take in Mm. a way. Like, try anything and let everybody kind of have some creative voice. I mean, everybody was doing everything at both places. It could be a low-level nothing designer doing something very important. I remember I was like hand applicating a dress that we were doing for Sarah Jessica Parker for the Met when I was at McQueen and I literally like was 10 years old. <laughs> Not really, but, but I was so young. I was 19. Yeah, I mean, well, so that's that was, young. Yeah, so I was like, that's so interesting that like everybody got to like actually work be on Be a part things. of it. Yeah. I was actually curious about that because yeah. you know, just in watching the documentaries, both of them, you know, you see how hands-on both of the designers were. And yeah. that's exactly how you work to this yeah. day. And I, 100%. And I, I just remember when I was doing all my research on Mr. Christian Siriano, oh, yeah. I was just thinking like that you must have – you've always been hands-on with yeah. everything you've done. And then you probably got a glimpse into these masterminds and thought, oh, I can still be hands-on. Yeah. And that's got to be inspirational walking into – it's the best thing, I think. I think it's the only way that you can still get, like, your kind of actual real creative voice out there. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think sometimes, as you know, in this business, there's a lot of opinions. Oh, are there? <laughs> yeah. There's lots of agents and men. Manag- you know, there's all that. So, like, my fun part of my day is actually, like, making the clothes. Okay, so when I walk into your office, what part am I walking into? Because you've already made the collection. Yeah. And that, so that's the part that you're obsessed with. It's like yeah. the pre-fashion show. Yeah. The fu- it's still— Is it the drawing? Is it the— It's the getting everything. the fab. It's literally everything. It's the everything. I'm a big fabric, like, obsessor, so mm-hmm. I buy way too much and spend way too much money on it. Um, that's like a— problem. Um, But I just love it because I appreciate the work that went into it. Like all, they work so hard on creating these amazing things. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to buy more and more. I never use half of them. That's fine. I sketch every single thing still by hand, every dress. It's kind of crazy. Did that help you going into 2008 and winning Project Runway? I mean, probably (laughs) because I make decisions very quickly. I don't like harp on things. I don't, I'm not like, oh, is it, is it this sleeve? Is it, no, do another sleeve tomorrow. Like, who cares? <laughs> so that's actually like, I think I'm just very decisive mm-hmm. in everything. Mm-hmm. It's kind of why I'm able to like dress 
17 women on a carpet in one season because I don't go back and forth a hundred times. I'm like, this is what it is. It's going to look like this. Like, let's figure it out. You're not over analyzing or getting yeah. anxious about something. Because I don't think, because I, I actually think that's when it's not good. Mm, interesting. Yeah, and I actually think that's when a lot of like actresses and musicians or whoever are on, on a carpet or whatever, when it actually isn't as successful is when there's too many people involved and there's too many thoughts. And there, yeah. it's sometimes just when it's like, like with Billy Porter at the Oscars, yeah. like literally, like I did that the week before. I didn't even fit him. I like, mean, that was gorgeous. Like it was just like I don't have time. I was no. like, "This is what you're wearing. This is it." But he probably was so in love with it. Yeah, but was but, he afraid to wear it? No, no, of course not, Billy. Please. <laughs> no, he's not afraid. He wasn't afraid of anything. Oh um, he like wanted to wear like tulle and like sequin. I mean, it was viral. That yeah, one. yeah, it was gorgeous. But that's what I mean. Like we didn't think about it. I just. Did it, mm-hmm. and I think that's when it's sometimes great. Mm-hmm. I believe that. Yeah. So was it hard after you won two thousand eight Project Runway, and then all of a sudden you're in demand? Yeah. What was that process like? Going Literally. from having nothing, winning, having the star power, and then now all of a yeah. sudden it's like, what are you going to do? No, it's insane. You have an immediate customer in a second, and they want product or they want something of your world and you have right. nothing to give them and it's really hard. So that's why like I showed a collection immediately. I put product out there like I was doing brand partnerships like right away, um, which is like when I got my Payless deal and people were like, what are you doing? Now people will die for that deal. Like, you know, things that people were like kind of like poo-pooing in 2008, then the market crashed. The economy went down. My first market day was Saks Fifth Avenue was the day Lehman Brothers Literally, that was the day. Did they you? canceled their appointment, obviously, oh, no. um, as everyone else did. <laughs> yeah. But for me, I had nothing to base it on. I was like, okay, well, last year we made no money, so we're only going to do better. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I treated it. Yeah. I mean, that's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Or- Whereas every other company was like, oh, my God, we're going bankrupt. We have no sales. I was like, oh, well, any sales are going to be something for me. Right. But then all of a sudden you got your footing. Yeah, and then we just, like, I just, like, kept doing things. Like, just kept pushing through. And I think the biggest thing was, like, making product. Like, we just, I showed four collections a year, every year from, like, day one. The last 12 years, you've had four collections every year? Yeah. It's, like, so annoying. Christian. I hate clothes. I just said (laughs) outside, I was like, I cannot wait to, like, not talk about clothes for, like, just, like, three days. I'll just three. (laughs) I'm like, where are you going? To, what are you doing for three days? I'm going to, I'm showing in Paris and then I'm going to go to Ibiza for a week after. Are you having a full on show in Paris? Yes. Oh my God. I know you told me this last season, yeah. but like, it's like a full on, it's no, not. it's like a full on show. Like whoever's idea was that was dumb, but. It was yours. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But I really wanted to, like, I, because. Wait, why are you having two shows in one season? I know. Because this is a thing that we're, I'm testing because I will say almost because what's happening in our world, almost half of our buyers don't come to the U.S. anymore. Right. And that's a huge part of our business. So they don't get to see all the work that we put into why we do a show, which mm. is the fantasy, the drama, the beauty of the clothes, walking. They just sit up, they just look at them on a rack in a showroom model who doesn't fit the clothes. Mm. So I'm like, well, this is dumb. Mm. So I want to try. And we'll see how it goes. So, sorry, just coming from, like, a creative standpoint, what, yeah. are you doing the exact same show? No, it's a little different. Like, okay. a few different things uh, mixed up a bit. And yeah. are you having Curve Girls in the show? Yes. Oh, my gosh. Are there Curve Girls in Paris that are coming out for your show? Yes. That's fantastic. Yes. Precious will be there. And yes. And Nikita and Candace. Yes, and yes. I was like, even if they're not coming, we're flying them. Oh, great. Yeah, because we have to have it. Because no one Siriano does it. Christian has a budget. I don't. But you do. You're flying girls out. Well, I will Designers I don't to. do that. Hey, you heard it here first. He <laughs> has like, a budget. I'm like, I don't want to. <laughs> but if I have to. Well, that is the thing. There's not a there's not a lot of curvy models there in aren't. Europe. And I mean, you just named so, three of the top curve girls right now. Yeah. So I was like, I felt like it made sense if they can't come, that they, they need to come because yes. they should be there representing. Major. Yeah. Oh, my God. I can't wait to watch. I know. I'm Are you so going to have it live, live streaming? No, probably not. But- 
We're going to keep it chic and very patty. We, it's very French. Got it. It's like, I was almost going to do like no music and it'd be like super like a thing. And then I got scared because I was like, then people are going to be like bored and annoyed. So, you know. Music does add something it does, to it the does. show. Yeah. It really does. Okay. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but I want to talk about CFDAs because yeah. for so long, they just weren't accepting you. Yeah. It was like. But we just went to the CFDAs together. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. people were dead. Well, duh. I mean, first of all, <laughs> let me just like have a little moment about Christian Seriano. He made me two outfits. You made me two looks. Yeah. Custom. Yeah. One was the one that I wore, and then the other one was actually one that I just wore to New York Fashion Week, yeah. and it was the polka dots, and we ripped yeah. the sleeves off. Yeah. <laughs> which I had no idea what went into a sleeve. <laughs> I know. <laughs> like, you see the sleeve I have on today? Yeah. Right? It's a little, uh-huh. a little puff. A lot of work. And you gave me a choice yeah. to pick which one I wanted, and we went with the black. I love what we picked, obviously. We, it was gorgeous, and I couldn't tell you then that I was pregnant. I know, but I had a but feeling. <laughs> I was like, something's going on and I'm really annoyed. <laughs> I know, because like, I wasn't drinking. No, and I didn't want to party. <sighs> no, at all. At all. I was like, God, what a buzzkill this <laughs> date is. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. Was never like, inviting her again. <laughs> I probably wrote that to somebody. I'm like, never. No. No, but I actually, no, I had a feeling the third time when I asked you if you wanted to, like something. Because I think I asked you again. And I was like, are you sure? And you were like, no. And like, you were like over me asking you. So I was like, okay. I was like, if you could hand me another roll, that would be great. Yes, definitely. <laughs> So, but, okay, so we just had a fabulous time, but everybody yeah. there was drooling over you, drooling yeah. over my look. You looked amazing. But this is not how it's always been. Yeah. I mean, I think in the very beginning, I actually only applied once and um, wasn't accepted. And then I didn't apply the year after because I just was like, I don't care right. that much. What does um, it mean to a designer to be in the CFDAs? It means different things for everyone, I think, because it depends on what you need. For me, I just really kind of like, really just honestly just wanted to be a part of like a good group of designers that were doing great things in the world, which I think is what the CFDA is for. It's like to celebrate all these designers that are doing great things out there. Um, Because it's not every American designer, but it's a good, really, really good group. So yeah, that was it. I just wanted to be a part of it Mm -hmm. in some way. I actually didn't really even know what they did. And I needed a little bit of help in the beginning because I was like, am I doing the right things and things like that, which I think they're great at mentoring they young also, brands. So is that what they do? Then? Yeah, they help. You know, it's like Stephen Cole will answer an email if you email him and say like, Shh, do you think I do you think this is right? And he'll answer. And mm-hmm. I think that's pretty amazing. It is. I think that there's a misconception with people being in the fashion industry that they're cold and mean and they don't want to help people. Yeah. But I think that it's a conversation that people should be having is like – it there's so much that people want to do to help the next generation. Yeah, yeah. I think it's more so now than ever. I mean, I, I think early, early on, 2008, eight nine. I think the industry was quite closed off. Mm. I, I do, I do kind of agree. But now I think it's very different because if we don't support each other, we're not going to survive. Yes. At all. Like the industry is going to fully like implode. Because clothes are really just not being sold as much as they it's were. Just not, it's just not the same game anymore. It's like we have to support each other. We have to, yeah, and, and that's everything. That's models. That's hair and makeup teams. That's everything. Like Or else like the whole creative kind of business is kind of going to die. What do you think that you have to do to keep up with the times – I think you have to be, like, very, very optimistic and open-minded about every single thing, every project, what will lead to something else. Because it didn't used to be that way. It used to be like, oh, you could never do this. But now it's not the case anymore. Which is like— Which is like where we're sitting and doing this show right now. Right. This would not have— No model would have ever done this. Never. Also— And it's amazing. No designer would have ever had— a line with Payless. No. Or Lane Bryant. No. Tell me about those collaborations. No. Or anything. Or done lots of things. I was literally 22 years old and Payless was like, I want to offer you this amount of money to be a shoe designer and sell millions of pairs of shoes. Was it seven figures? Yeah. Okay, good. I just yeah. want to make sure. Hello. <laughs> and I was like, and I was like, I'm going to cry. Like, I, well, one my mom was like, you take this damn deal. I don't care what the hell happens. So, so Mommy. one, like, but it's true because you're like, why would a, like a 22-year-old say no to that? I'm like, get, I get to be a shoe designer. I get to sell shoes around the world. Like, it's a global, huge billion-dollar company. That would be weird to say no. I've never been designed shoes before. They were like, hey, here's a collection. Do what you want. 
that really doesn't happen. So that was like, I took it as like, wow, this is really cool. I'm out of college. I just graduated and they're offering me this. So I didn't think that that was strange to say yes. And I still don't because I think people now, if they listen to how I explain it, they're like, oh, you're right. There's so many designers, I think, that would wish that they could go into mainstream. Yeah. But I think that there is still a misconception where there's maybe some designers who are like, oh, no, if I go mainstream, then I'm lowbrow. What's the balance for you? I think the balance is making sure at least that my other part of the collection is still fantasy, dreamlike, aspirational. I mean, we're still doing red carpet. We're still making, I still make clothes that maybe nobody will ever wear, but that's okay because it's what I like to do. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's that's how you balance the both. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, what you have done is you have literally brought in everybody from a size zero to a size 24, 26. Yeah, 28. 28. On your runways, made clothes for them. Yeah. How hard is it to manufacture clothes in every size? I mean, it's definitely harder. It's Mm -hmm. not the easiest job. Um, And that's really just because the process is longer. It's like you have to fit your clothes on multiple sizes before you actually produce them, Um, which a lot of brands just don't want to do because they don't want to take the time um, or the money and the resources. So, yeah, that's it. But it's doable. We do it. And I have a small team, so it's not that hard. Now, why do you do it? I think, really, I was doing it because people were annoying me because they kept saying my clothes were for models, and I, like, didn't understand what that meant. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, they'd be like, oh, only models can wear those clothes. And I was like, well, that's not true. You're annoying. So I was like, well, then I'm going to show you that, like, these are my new models, and they, like, are curvy and cool. Interesting. That was it. That's really why I did it. Did it. Just because people were judging you on who was wearing them. Yeah. And then these celebrities just came out of nowhere. And then that, well, and that actually, that was first. Because I will say, like, my very first few years in business, I was dressing, like, everyone. I was doing. No, you were dressing everyone. Everybody. And they all were different. Like, I was doing Oprah. I was doing, like, I mean, Whoopi was one of my first people I dressed. I was doing Rihanna. Like, everybody. And they all were curvy girls. Mm -hmm. But that was just, like, that was who was asking for clothes when I was doing all my research and me and my writer were coming up, it was like all these fabulous women of color and black women yeah. that you have just been dressing yeah. for so long. Growing up in Baltimore City, we're like kind of the opposite where I was more the minority because I went to a school with mostly black kids. Um, so it just was normal to me. I don't know. It's like cultures collide and in some, I think that's what's kind of beautiful like about our world. I, I totally agree. And I think that just embracing each other as who we are. As who and, we are, yeah. And enhancing the beauty. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Speaking of amazing black women, Leslie Jones yeah. on in your Have front you row. Have you ever hung out with Leslie? <gasps> Only at events. Okay, well, she's it's next level. I mean, she's amazing. <laughs> yes. And she's incredibly kind. So she was hooting and hollering at one of your shows yeah. and got lots of press. <laughs> Yes. Last show, spring 2020, yeah. uh, spring, summer 2020, gosh, that's a mouthful, I was hooting and hollering. Yes. And I feel like you hoot and holler at a Christian Seriano show because of the diversity, yeah. because of how fun the show is, yeah. and because the fashion is just so like over the top and fabulous. Yeah, so I think at my show, you're seeing some things kind of you're like, oh, like you're not really ready, I think, because I just like make uh, things that I like – I'm just inspired by. So if it's a feathered thing, who cares? Where do you pull your inspiration? And I know this is a question that all designers get. No, it's everywhere. It's the most random things. Like, it really is. Like, I could design a whole collection just by this room. Like, the fabric around that is circular and, like, could be an interesting shape. You know, whatever. Like, I love, like, the opening of the lights behind you. Like, that that shadow could be really cool. Like, anything, I think, can be inspiring. I'm good at also, like, giving critiques because I think, which is why I'm good on, like, the new version of the show. Because, oh, yes. Because I see anything I think can actually be interesting. You just have to figure it out. So you are on the new um, season of Project yeah, Not Runway. that we need to talk about that. I just— Well, we are going to talk about it because you brought it up. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's your fault, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so not only did you win in 2008, but now um, the new reboot, you came on for the first season, and yeah. you're about to start second season. Yeah. We already filmed it. How does it feel? It's fine. It's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's great. It's great. Honestly, it's very it, – it was really weird the first few days. It was, has to be. Yeah, of course. And it it's more was more strange, to be honest, 
Not even because of the show, because the producers are the same from my season. So what's different now, yeah. having been mentored by Tim Gunn, and now you're the mentor? Yeah. What, what well, changes? One, I'm the boss, which is exciting. Before, I had zero dollars and was just being yapped at. And Tim came into your room. Exactly. And I mean, you lived in a closet. I lived in a closet. Like, you had to li- pull your mattress out yeah. of... No, I have like true Madonna story. Like I lived in a walk up just like Madonna on East on fourth between A and B, just like Madonna in a five floor walk up. I think we stayed in the same apartment. I really do. Till this day. Did do you know this story? To, did she have to put her mattress in like a cupboard she and had pull it a out every closet night? closet bedroom. Oh my God. I know. Isn't that crazy? You are Madonna. Wait. I know. Madonna, is that you? I know. Um, but back to Project yeah, Runway. It's really great. Um, I actually think that they get so much, such more real advice because I'm a working designer, like in this business. So and you know how the show goes, and not even that, honestly. I actually don't even really think about the show anymore. When they, when I'm with them, I really, really treat them like my own team in my office. Like they're telling me, they're sitting there being, okay, this is inspired by Beyonce, and she's gonna wear this. And I'm like, well, I just dressed Beyonce last week. She's not wearing that. Like, I literally give that. They'll be like, oh, this is Ariana. And I'm like, well, I literally just made Ariana a dress. She wore it. I'm like, I'm telling you, this is not what she would ever wear or pull from a designer. So I literally give them very, like, real, which you cannot get. Like, they should be so lucky. Like, I work with a lot of people. So I think that's what I give to them that no mentor really could give. And you probably weren't even getting that kind of advice when you were on. No, because Tim was a teacher. So he was more... Um, technical, and I'm technical, but also, like, real. I give them—I try to be, like, pretty real. Well, thank God for all the technical, because you had, (laughs) in one year, 17 Oscar dresses, nine Emmy dresses, six dresses at the Met. I mean, you are— I have no money left. You're the king of, well, <laughs> I know because there is a misconception here, right? Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Because someone like me, I'll come in, I'll be like, Christian, I need a dress. Yeah. And you are the one who pays for the dress. Yeah. I just wear it. Yeah. So, so talk about what the yeah. worth is for having the dress on a runway or yeah. on a red carpet. On a red carpet. It's <clears throat> to get your, you know, your brand out there to make sure people see your creative voice. It's almost like basically, you know, you are our form of like a gallery. Instead of it's a painting on a wall, it's a work on a body that walks around a party. Mm-hmm. And that's really what it is. So that's kind of um, been my way of getting my work out there because it's very hard in our industry to get people to understand what you do. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, okay, and then it's a tag. And then, and then now then- it's a trickle effect because now it's like, now we like are a little bit known for doing red carpet clothes. So now we get a lot of requests all the time and it's a lot of work and a lot of money. And the Met is very expensive and very annoying. And I have really appreciate it, but it is really hard. That's the hardest one. I think the Met is the hardest it's as the well. Hardest, which, I mean, it's a lot of pressure and on the Oscars. The designer. And it's then it's a lot. lot of pressure on the hair and makeup. Yeah. And then it's like whoever's wearing it is yeah. the one who really gets the like critique. Yeah. And it's yeah. But it's so major. Yes. And it, like, lasts for a long time. And you always have those moments. The Oscars are similar. I mean, every red, big red carpet, is it, it, it is similar. It's worth it. It's worth it. But how sometimes. do you withstand the bandwidth of just keeping up? <sighs> well, I don't know. We all cried a little bit this week because the Emmys are Sunday. And how many people are you dressing for the Emmys? I don't know, but it's too many. But it's so hard. Can then, you give us a round number? Maybe six or seven. I know. It's, like, so dumb. Anything off the red carpet? Or off of the One runway? One off my collection. I would actually that's, rather it be a lot. That's it? Yeah. All the rest are custom. What? Okay. So can we just talk custom for a second? I, know, I feel so like level. you are one of— You know of, Melanie in my office? Yes. Okay, she might die. Oh, no. Like, if I asked her But she her just had her birthday. Thing. No, because we have literally made seven Emmys dresses. And the show and Paris. Okay, but can we talk about the <laughs> fact that you are one of the only designers that keeps doing custom and not off of the runway? I do it one because obviously not everything we show on the runway will fit everyone. So I are so I feel like I'm like oh I don't I would not want to be respect respectful saying like oh I, this won't fit you so I won't send you anything. So I'm like okay I'll make you something. That's kind of how I fix that problem. And then you just like suck it up, Buttercup, and you make it. I suck it up. Yes. <sighs> 
It's hardcore. Then if you, this one dress, though, from the runway gets worn, I will laugh because it was so easy. Really? And I was like, well, I wish they all were like that. Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, so then it's hard because then, then the this, this celebrity is on the red carpet and then yeah. somebody could get flack like Christina Hendricks did. Of course. Yeah, you never know. But it's major flack because it was – they told her that, yeah. oh, there's no way that a big girl should be in a big in dress. A big dress, yeah. I was I, – I was yeah. – I was disturbed at the fact that they thought, first of all, that, that was a big dress. That also started, actually, I will say, to change almost everything for everyone. When those comments came out, it was the first time anyone had ever really vocally said something about, like, someone on a carpet like that. Everybody about always, their size. About their size. Everybody has always been like, oh, I hate the dress. It's ugly, whatever. It's not flattering, whatever. But, but that was, like, really particularly about a body. And she also, like— is the one of the most beautiful women in the entire world. Men have idolized their whole life. So, like, did it make sense that, like, people, not men, everyone, women, everyone. It's Marilyn Monroe. She I mean, literally is living Marilyn Monroe. And I think that that really changed a lot. You can see her breasts. You can see her waist. Yes. Yeah, it's just that amazing. color on her skin tone was, was gorgeous. Yeah. I just didn't understand. Was she yeah. hurt by that? I think she was, like, I think she may have been. But to be honest, like, no, Christina is, like, She's so confident and amazing. And we did, like, six dresses after that. I know. Let's also talk about your your store, the curated yeah, NYC. Yeah. I mean, I've been there a billion times. Yeah. And you just moved in there in the last two years? Like a year and a half. Oh, not my. Even, not even. So yeah. what's it been like? Yeah, it's amazing to, like, literally see how, like, the customers interact and being there. And it just feels very, like, old. It feels, like, very old fashion because we're all in one place we're in this townhouse and you go up the spiral staircases it kind of is really nice um, you can walk so you literally you walk in a doorbell goes off yeah and there's a lady there who or usually a lady yeah at the front desk yeah. and she's like hello and you can yeah. shop downstairs yeah and then for me i just go straight upstairs Obviously. i know where to go yeah and you're usually there with a rack of clothes and yeah. we do a fitting yeah. and even though it's like on the upper east side i know whatever that's where like a lot of rich people are <laughs> So, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You're forgiven. And now you have J. Jill. J. Jill, yeah. Hi, J. Jill. J. Jill. So what was this collaboration like? J. Jill's awesome. It, the CEO left Lane Bryan and went to J. Jill, and she's unbelievable. We love Linda. We love Linda. And actually, to be honest, like, J. Jill was the best opportunity because it's my first fully inclusive because it's zero to 28, petite and tall, in all styles. And they, J. Jill has never done this before, have they? they? They do it, but not like this. They've never done it full on, same collection, same clothes. So it's awesome. They've never done a collect collaboration before. Um, so all the above. It just was like an awesome project. Okay, so what's next for Christian Siriano? We have more to come with J. Jill, which is really exciting. And, um, and yeah, and just like building the business, keeping it going. Like, making sure customers come back season after season. I love it. That's I love it. what you stand for. I yeah. love who you are as a person. Thank you. I love, love you. how— This is so fun. This is, like, in your living room. But I know. But not with, like, people in front of us. I know. There's all these people here. <laughs> but What's I like it. On? But I, just thank you. Thank you for being on Pretty thank Big you. Deal. Now, yes. there's one thing that we do at the end of every Pretty Big Deal. Okay, we ready. do a quick, like, kind of lightning round. Yes. And you just have to fill in the blank. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. <sighs> I pretty much always— I pretty much always, oh, God, talk about money. <laughs> <laughs> it's bad. What's the biggest lesson you've learned this year? Ooh. I think it's, like, cliche. Don't look back, like, fully forward. Like, I'm so over the past. That's yes. great. Yeah. What's the biggest deal you've ever made? And it can be like, I made a big deal about that. Or like, that was a really big deal. Or like, or money. Because we know you like to talk about money. Yeah. Oh my God, big deal. I mean, I think it's a pretty big deal that I get to show in New York and in Paris. And yeah. I honestly don't know any other designer that's doing that or has done that. Yeah, I'm Has excited. another de designer done that? I don't know. Okay, because you're a pretty big deal, I want to know what you think is a pretty big deal. Ooh, what I think is a pretty big deal. I think we still have to, it's a pretty big deal that I think we still have to like talk about so much about like bodies and beauty and blah, blah, blah. I do think it's a weird thing. It is. So I hope that my pretty big deal is that 
when it changes, that will be a pretty big moment. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on yeah. Pretty Big Deal. Love you. Love you. Thank you, everybody, for watching Pretty Big Deal with Christian Zariano. And we want you guys to join the conversation. So go on Instagram and Twitter. Write us a little comment. Write us a little message. You never know. We could read it right here. <laughs>